This story investigates the Rohingya people who over the course of half a century went from one of the most discriminated groups of people in the world to the leaders of their own autonomous nation. Nearly 60 years ago in 2017, 1.2 million Rohingya refugees fled their homes in the Rakhine state of Myanmar due to military clearance operation that the United Nations later described as a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. Many fled to neighbouring Bangladesh, who soon found the ever-increasing migration of refugees unmanageable. After five years of the Rohingyas taking refuge in Cox's Bazaar, where conditions were overpopulated, chaotic and sprawling, the Bangladeshi government sought plans to relocate the Rohingya to Bazanchar, otherwise known as the Floating Island. Who would imagine that a sandbar of silt in the Bay of Bengal could become fertile ground for a new autonomous nation. Back in 2018, the Bangladeshi government began plans to relocate the refugees 30 kilometres away from the mainland, on an island which had been forming naturally over the past 11 years due to silt deposits in the Bay of Bengal. There was international scepticism from engineers that this island would be too unstable to endure the construction of the refugee camp let alone support the planned 100,000 Rohingya inhabiting the island. The Bangladeshi government, however, were determined in the relocation of the refugees and continued investment of over $272 million to construct new camps that could accommodate the relocated Rohingya people. This caused humanitarian groups around the world to ask, who should be responsible for managing refugees? and how are host countries expected to deal with their influx. In 2020, the government of Bangladesh successfully relocated 100,000 people from the camps of Cox's Bazaar to the island. Despite the resistance of both the Rohingya people and the UN due to the camp's isolation, lack of access to resources and flood-prone nature, Bangladeshi officials initially claimed they had taken necessary precautions against flooding, with houses on the island built more than a metre above the ground and the construction of a 13-kilometre flood embankment to protect the camp. This was proven wrong. The first five years showed that once the Rohingya were relocated to the island, they were no longer supported by the Bangladeshi government, resulting in themselves becoming more autonomous. How could a minority isolated on a floating island use limited resources to organise themselves successfully? With continued help from the UN and NGOs for the greater half of the first decade, the Rohingya were able to begin dredging offshore to create shipping lanes, ensuring the long-term success of the island and a connection to the outside world. The Rohingyas discovered that they were able to dredge for heavy mineral sandal deposits around Bazantra Island, not only providing an economic generator, but leaving them with a surplus of sand that they could use to build up their nation physically. With the discarded processed sand, they added over six square kilometres of area to the island and an increase in elevation above sea level of 18 metres at its highest point, leaving many to wonder what form would a nation take when constructed with a logic of terraforming. As the island's population grew, the terraformed sand began increasing buildable land suitable for development along the coastline of the island, which sustained the increasing need for development. These terraforms altered the urban pattern of new neighbourhoods from the radial plans to more decentralised model connected by canals. By 2032, most islanders now lived outside of the original camp and occupied various sections of the coastline. The Rohingya began two massive infrastructural initiatives, the creation of a seawall and shipping port. The seawall provided additional protection against flooding and erosion, creating hard boundaries that defined the island. But the next question was to be, how could they support themselves economically on a desolate island with minimal resources? In order to build an economy from scratch, Bazong Cha and the Rohingya people positioned the island as a repository for unwanted goods, specialising in the recycling of decommissioned ships. Two thirds of the reclaimed metal would be sold in wholesale market and the remaining third was used within the architecture and infrastructure of the island. Bazong Cha benefited immensely from the World Environmental Protection Act of 2028 which caused the decommissioning of 35% of vessels from the South China Sea. 
Once the ships had been procured, a skeleton crew of Bazon Char mariners transported them to the island and beached them along the shore. With all the hazardous materials remediated from the vessels, labourers equipped with torches began cutting away sizable chunks of the vessel to later be processed into nominal sheets and sold on the international wholesale market. Additionally, many of these procured ships were used as skeletons during the public construction initiative, which saw the development of the island's major canal, hospital and schools in 2040. Although shipbreaking remains the primary industry, the island has undergone exponential development and the central business district known as Bazanchar City was formally incorporated in 2045 under the jurisdiction of Bangladesh, starting the process of Bazanchar becoming an autonomous island nation. With their growing autonomy and self-reliance, the Rohingya sought out to make their island their permanent home. After close to four decades of inhabiting the island, Bazan Cha was recognised as a micronation by the UN in 2053. This acknowledgement gave the Rohingya a permanent home after a century of persecution, genocide and poverty. The perseverance of the Rohingya people and their story speaks to oppressed people seeking autonomy in the modern era. With this freedom came the need to vote on the governmental structure that would govern the island as a nation. Nearly 2 million votes were cast on May 18, 2054, six months after the UN's ruling, which secured that the government of Bazan Cha should be a council-based democratic model, where all neighbourhoods would be represented by council members voted on by their respective communities. After several years of planning, a governmental campus was approved by the people to be constructed on a newly completed terraform close to the original refugee camp. Terraform 7, when completed, should become a reminder of the plight of the Rohingya and develop into a physical manifestation of what they were able to accomplish on their own on an uninhabitable island.